and changing the perspective for all of us for the future. It's an exciting time. And I think the exciting part of it is that we have here a vibrant new international organization in the heart of the Middle East, in the heart of the Gulf, that is looking to a future, a sustainable, positive future for us all in a region that produces today's energy and preparing itself for tomorrow's. I think these are remarkable times. And you have this machine here. And two extraordinary guys who are going to be sitting in this for a number of days just to prove one thing, that we are on the right track in Arena. They are among the pioneers who are proving how technology can change and what the postcard from the future is looking like. And I uh, take my hat off to them in admiration. We lived through the changes in an innovation in information and communication technology. The next wave of disruptive change is happening in energy. And these guys are going to tell us from their perspectives where they see innovation really driving us to the future and give us a sense of this perspective. I've talked almost continuously for three days. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to relax and sit and enjoy the conversation. But I wanted to take this opportunity to welcome you. Uh, we're delighted that you're with us, behind us. I'm delighted to see you personally. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll ask Kalita to take over the proceedings. Welcome, thank you very much. Contradictors have very good arguments against us. And this is why so many governments are saying, let's wait until tomorrow to change something. This is why when we speak of the well-being of future generations to promote renewable energy, I believe it's a big mistake. We have to speak of the advantage of our generation for today. What are the advantage of our generation today for renewable energy. Well, we have, I believe, one argument 
that we don't hear enough when we speak of renewable energy. It's the argument of energy efficiency. Energy efficiency, in our opinion, at Solar Impulse, is the condition to bring the renewable energies on the market. Because energy efficiency can bring jobs, profit, growth, new products that the world desperately needs to be cleaner. Not tomorrow, but today. This goes through the clean technology process. And this is profitable. And what happens if we introduce the energy efficiency parameter in the renewable energy policy? Well, the consequence is going to be extremely important. Today, the clean technologies can divide by two the energy consumption of our world. By replacing all technologies who have too many losses and pollute too much, by clean technologies that have a better efficiency and less losses. If we do it, the parts of renewable energy that we can have on the market will double just by dividing by two the energy consumption with clean technologies. We will be able to have half of the rest with renewable sources. And this is a really important and critical aspect for the energy policy of the countries. You can say it's impossible. Divide by two the energy consumption of the world, it's impossible. Well, Solar Impulse has the goal of demonstrating that it is possible. This airplane is so energy efficient that only the light of the sun can give enough energy to run the four electrical motors and load the batteries during the day flight to spend the night in the air until the next sunrise and continue the next day, the next night, the next day and so on. It's clear that we have to make the demonstration that it is possible. It is the role of the industry to make the demonstration that all the technologies that we carry on board can be used on the market. And this is exactly the role of our partners. They produce technologies for us that come now on the market for LED lighting, for batteries, for solar cells, for light materials, for insulation forms, very light structures of construction. All these technologies can divide by two the energy consumption of the world. And then we have to convince the politicians. Because the industry knows that it works. The problem is that the politicians wait for the industry to make the proof, and the industry waits for the politicians to put the legal frame. Because no one is going to invest millions of dollars in a field where they don't know if the legal frame will allow them to continue. And the recent examples of solar energy in Europe is an example that has discouraged a lot of investors. This is why there is a big paradox in solar impulse. In a way, it's a very philosophical flight of an airplane flying with no fuel around the world. On the other hand, it's an extremely practical and concrete call to action to the political world to have the courage to introduce the legal frame that will allow the clean technologies to bring energy efficiency on the market and to allow our renewable energy to become enough for the energy production of the world. This is the message that I wanted to share with you before the panel will start, in order for you to understand why we're doing this flight around the world, and also how you can benefit from it. Our goal is to make a huge internet platform that will be available to all the one who want to participate in order to bring the maximum number of people before COP21 to give their opinion on how they believe the future will be.
Our goal is to bring enough millions of people from this platform pushing renewable energies, pushing clean technologies to oblige the governments to understand what the people want. A mix between philosophy and politics, that's what we like with André, and I hope you'll like it also. Good luck to all.